If you're unfamiliar, this is Doe. That's what he called himself. The real name is Marshall Applewhite, and he was the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult. They all checked out together the night of March 26, 1997. And uh, that was the end of it, sadly. That was the, the end of their story. So he created some initiation tapes, apparently. I wanted to give these a listen because it's fascinating to listen to. So, And it's a good lesson for how these people got pulled into it in the first place. So let's give this a listen, see what he had to say for himself. Uh, this is not the first part of the series. If you didn't see the others, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. This one is an entirely new tape anyways, so we're starting from scratch, basically. Let's give it a listen. This is the 29th of September, 1996. Basically, it was another six months before they checked out together. Six, seven months, somewhere in that vicinity. I'm Doe. Marshall Applewhite is his real name. Doe probably doesn't mean anything to many of you. It's named after the musical note. T was his partner. T and Doe. To those that have heard of Doe, I might relate Doe to T and Doe of UFO 2 or, or of a UFO cult that made some splash in the news 1975. Yeah, I think they were created 74, and everybody was just kind of confused and blown away by the fact that there was a UFO cult in existence. When did the original Star Trek come out? 1966, yeah, okay. So they were heavily influenced by the original Star Trek, and as time went on, they were influenced by subsequent uh, Star Trek, um, like, not episodes, what do you call it, like, uh, series, yeah. Subsequent Star Trek series that came out as time went on. They were heavily influenced by that stuff quick interjection i won't take long i just wanted to tell you guys youtube's algorithm operates off of a few factors watch time whether or not you subscribe and whether or not you like something so if you really want to help my channel i would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end if you don't watch it to the end just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise i would appreciate that very much all right let's get back to the video and disappeared from the scene shortly after that and some of you have heard some efforts that we have had to try to share a little bit of what we have learned with the public periodically between 1975 and now we put out a statement called 88 update in 1988 and we've we did a little videotape a um, little while after that. I think it was 90, 92. I think this, his is a little bit loud, right? I'm going to turn it down just a hair because it's kind of blasting in my ear. I think it was 90, 92, 91, 92, uh, called Beyond Human. Now, today is quite a different urgency. It's urgent to me, it's urgent to the students that sit before me. <clears throat> Our reason for speaking to you is because we feel urgently to warn you of what we are about to say. So I think he said this is September of 96, and they checked out in March of 97, so only seven months away, and they were getting more urgent to proselytize, to spread their message, to get others to join. They were probably dealing with something called cognitive dissonance. You probably heard the term, but let me explain a little bit. Cognitive dissonance is basically like an anxiety that you cannot escape. It won't leave you alone. It nags at you until you face it head on, or you do a number of different things, okay? So... The first thing you can do to get rid of the, the stress, the cognitive dissonance stress of having a belief that does not match reality, that's what cognitive dissonance is, really. The, one of the things you can do to get rid of that stress is reform your belief to be something that matches both what you believed before and reality, basically. So... As an example, QAnon believed that Trump was never going to lose it, you know, the election. He's never going to lose authority. And when he did, they didn't know how to process it. They didn't know how to deal with it. So what did they do? They claimed 
secretly, he's really in power still. It was stolen from him, but really, he still has authority over everything. Secretly in the background. They simply couldn't deal with the fact that they were wrong all along, so they create a brand new story about it, basically. And that's what I kind of expect to see from Doe here. So let's give it a listen and see how he processes his cognitive dissonance that he has. His claim that a spaceship was going to come and pick him up and his whole crew, and it never happened. The spaceship never came. You know, to try to just put it as briefly as I can put it and as clearly as I can put it. Please. The, this planet is about to be recycled, refurbished, um, started over as far not, that doesn't mean it's going to be destroyed. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but <clears throat> it does mean that it's going to be recycled, refurbished. Well, what does it mean then exactly? If it doesn't mean that it's going to be destroyed, what do you mean when you say it's going to be recycled? That makes no sense otherwise. Now, you can say, well, who are you to say that? And I'll tell you who I am as to whether or not you believe who I am or not is up to you. Okay, lay it on me. And whether or not you believe that it's going to be recycled or refurbished is up to you. I thought you were going to tell us who you were. He believes he's Jesus, by the way. Jesus reincarnated, basically. Uh, I'll just... I'll just jump straight to it. I won't leave you hanging. Now, the purpose of this tape is to warn you that that is about to happen and that, and that it's going to happen very soon. If I would title this tape, it would be Last Chance to Evacuate Planet Earth Before It Is Recycled. Last Chance to evacuate Earth before it is recycled. <clears throat> the, if you've read any of our teachings, the information that we have, you know that our discipline is strict, that we teach. We, sh we should read his book, right? Should we read his book on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel? Would that be interesting to anybody else? I don't know. Sometimes... When I read books of lunatics like this, sometimes their books are just very obviously the scribblings of a madman. They make absolutely no sense whatsoever. And it's very clear that they were dealing with mental illness, clear as day. I read a book called, uh, what was it? Donald John Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ. I think that was the name of the book. And... Uh, it was just obvious the guy was dealing with mental illness the whole time. It was a full-blown novel, basically, like, I don't know, 300 pages or something. And it was real hard to get through because you could see the glaring mental illness in it from beginning to end. We eventually made it all the way through, but, oh, boy, was that a crazy book to read. So, anyways, um, I'm not sure if it would be worth the read or not. I'll take a look at the book later, maybe, and uh, see if it's worth reading. Maybe we'll read it on my Tell to Reads channel. We have. You know that our discipline is strict, that we teach overcoming human ways, overcoming human addictions. The purpose of that is not for religious reasons or for morality or in order to become righteous. So what he's talking about right now, he never had a problem with addictions, to my knowledge. He had a problem with the fact that he was gay. He had never had a, a, well, you know what? Did he have a, I think he had a wife. Yes, yes, he had a wife for a short time, but he was in a relationship with one of the men from his university, and he was a professor there. Now, that's very obviously deeply unethical, right? If you're in a position of authority over somebody, you should not be in a relationship with them, period. So anyways, uh, he was really fired for being gay, which is wrong in its own right. But he was fired for being gay and his whole life fell apart. He went into a mental institution. If you didn't hear this story, I'll just summarize for you. If you didn't see the other parts, because this is not part one. 
He went into a mental institution where he met his wife. Or I'm sorry, where he met his partner, Bonnie Nettles. She was the T in T and Doe. She was a fellow believer or a fellow creator of this religion, this group, this cult. They worked together and they believed that a spaceship was going to come pick them up. Now, that obviously never happened. She died of cancer in the 80s, and that didn't add up to him. That didn't make any sense. He didn't understand how that could be the case. She was supposed to go with him on a spaceship. Now she can't if she's dead. So anyways, he completely lost it after she died and shaved his head and ended up like this eventually. He looked very different before. Yeah, here you go. This is from Inside Edition. I I guess they released it to YouTube at least two years ago. I'm not sure if this is how old it is or not, but just listen to this. This is what uh, Doe or Marshall Applewhite looked like before he shaved his head and before T died, basically. One of the most notorious cult leaders in American history, Marshall Applewhite, known by his followers as Doe. But now we know there was also a female cult leader who first recruited Applegate to the leadership rank. Apple White, Apple White. And yeah, she was Bonnie Nettles. She was the uh, she was the the attendant or the nurse or whatever at his mental institution that he was checked into. Thanks. Never before seen footage shows Bonnie Nettles, who went by the name T. All the ones that you considered your family really is not your family. All these years later, we're now learning that the cult leaders call themselves Doe and T because they were huge fans of the sound of music and the Julie Andrews classic song, Do Re Mi. Okay, I didn't know about that, that that's why they named themselves that. I figured it was obviously something to do with the musical scale, but we've known that they called themselves T and Doe for a lot longer than two years. I've, I talked about this as one of the first cults I covered like seven years ago. So I don't know what Inside Edition's talking about unless this is an older video. Yeah, I don't want to hit, get hit with copyright strike. Okay, so that's an old video of him. Fascinating life inside of the uh, life inside of the mansion that they all lived in together was really, really strict. They all followed exact strict rules together, and they could never be alone because that could leave room for the possibility that they'll, you know, that they'll touch themselves, that they'll, um, I don't know. I got to come up with a really funny euphemism for that to use on stream, but. Anyway, that's that's what the fear was. So they were never, ever alone, basically. They had buddies that they'd be with 24-7. Some of them even neutered themselves, no joke, with a scalpel. I am dead serious. A scalpel and no anesthetic. And it wasn't that they did it to themselves. It was that they they did it to each other, basically. The cult did it to some of the people, but realized how dangerous it was. It could very easily lead to somebody's death. So anyway... They all lived in this mansion together. Uh, check out what uh, Inside Ed or wait, I think this is ABC. Check out what ABC had to say about it. A sprawling mansion, the curtains drawn, a mystery inside. An old videotape begins to flicker into view. Our first glimpse of a secret world. Christmas 95 is what it says here if you're just listening and not watching. It is Christmas, and we see... Okay, I don't want to get hit with copyright. I don't know what this is. ...see a kind of family bustling with activity. In their home videos, everyone's smiling, hugging, laughing. <laughs> At the stove, a girl from a well-heeled New York neighborhood. She was once a cheerleader. The whole... Notice how her hair is cut. All of the people cut their hair exactly the same way. In this bowl cut type of thing. They were trying to be androgynous... Because they believed that gender was a construction of man that is evil and should be shunned, basically. This is Doe's basically hatred of himself coming out. Hatred of the fact that he's gay or misunderstanding of gender and interests and all that stuff. This is his, his misunderstanding coming out. The world at her feet. Because if you do too fast, it breaks. It's really a pain. A young man born into a prominent Connecticut family, his future filled with opportunity and wealth. Are you filming this? No. The tall man at the door with a blazing smile, once a Colorado businessman, a former political candidate. 
another beautiful, quiet smile. This one right here is Uhura's brother from Star Trek, the original Star Trek, is her brother, also known as Nichelle Nichols. That was her name, yeah, Nichelle Nichols is her brother. He is the brother of a famous actress on an iconic TV show. Hailing frequencies open, sir. By the way, this cult was created off of Star Trek. It's a Star Trek cult, effectively. They believed that it was telling a, a true story or something. They believed that it would operate the, you know, very similarly. She is Lieutenant Uhura from Star Trek. We should have been there 10 minutes ago, sir. Look at the camera. You look great. So many people on this tape want high achievers, strivers filled with promise. Now performing a giddy talent show. That's a valedictorian who was once a presidential scholar. <laughs> See, right there, the fact that she's valedictorian, that means she was the top of her entire class. Means that was, that means there was nobody who had higher grades than her in the entire class, seriously. That is a feat to accomplish right there. She's valedictorian. That should be enough evidence for you to understand that falling for a cult is not an intelligence thing. Falling for a cult is a brainwashing thing. That's what it boils down to. It's not stupider people fall for it. That's not what it's about. I was in a cult and I wasn't stupid. People just can't cope with some of the problems that they're dealing with. They can't cope with the fact that, you know, they're, you know, existential crises or something. So they will do anything they can to alleviate that stress that they have in themselves. And it leads to things like cults coming out, you know? So take a closer look at the revelers. Do you notice anything about them? Their haircuts, exactly alike. Baggy clothes, no gender. And with every move, they fix their adoring gaze on one man in the room. Yeah, so anyway, that's where I'll call it. I was hoping it was going to add information, but it's basically said everything that I have already said in this series. Point is, it was a cult that was based on Star Trek, and this guy went as far as shaving his head. Why did he shave his head? He completely lost his mind at one point. I, maybe he shaved it to look more like Picard? That's a very distinct possibility. You don't even understand how influenced this group was by Star Trek. Seriously, this is their exit tape. I've played this a couple times, so if you've already seen this, bear with me. But this is their exit tape. This woman, this is the last thing this woman ever said before checking out. Ever said publicly, I guess. We might not, but we hope that you remember us as we were and not how other people are going to try and tell you that we are. And one last thing we'd like to say is 39 to beam up. Thank you. <laughs> they believed a, star, a starship was going to come pick them up and beam them up. Beam their consciousness up, I guess, not their physical bodies. It's just sad. It's just straight up sad. Anyway, let's keep listening here. The purpose of that is to go to the heavens. Humans have some idea because of what the negative forces have let them believe or have led them to believe. Humans have the idea that through religion, that if I live a good life, then I get to go to heaven when I die. And they don't know what heaven is, but they think that heaven is where God is and heaven is where whoever the leader of their religion is and they'll get to go be with them if they've lived a good life by whatever standard their religion was. The fact is that there is only one kingdom level, a kingdom level, just like there's a human kingdom. There's only one kingdom level above the human kingdom. And that kingdom level made the human kingdom and designed the planet. So it's a UFO cult, famously. The guy believed that he was a space alien, that came to Earth to save people and bring them up with him. And the only way he knew how to do that was by 
checking out with them, according to him. And designed the planet, designed all of its resources, designed all of its life forms, designed humans, and designed humans even with the potential of leaving the human kingdom in order to go to the kingdom level above human. Now, the startling thing to many is that the kingdom above human is physical. There's some idea that the kingdom above human is spiritual, as if it's limited to being spiritual. It is spiritual in the sense that if you think of mind as synonymous with spirit and you become something that identifies with your mind instead of the suit of clothes you wear, then it is spiritual because that becomes your identity. Even if you're in the human world and humans identify with the mind that they have or the spirit that they have, remember those two are synonymous. If they identify with that mind, then they don't think that they die when the body they're wearing drops. They think that they move into another world. Right, so he's basically trying to describe a spirit here um, haphazardly. All right. And they move out of the body. Whether they move into another world depends upon whether they're connected or not, or what their information is, or what they are capable of knowing or doing, what they've been willing to learn. You know, the next level, or the evolutionary level above human, oops, I said that bad word, evolutionary level. Because Wait, is evolution a bad word? Because religious people think, ooh, Evolution, does this mean that, that we don't... Well, it is a bad word. I love it, dude. I love it. ...don't believe in creation? That's the most ridiculous thing that someone could think, is that evolution is not a part of creation. That kingdom level created everything that is, or made everything that is, and among those things it made, it made a number of things that advance in an evolutionary progression. Dude, I, this is so funny. Uh, I've never seen the original Star Trek series. I loved Deep... Uh, I'm sorry, not Deep Space Nine. I actually hated Deep Space Nine. I loved The Next Generation. Yeah, it was The Next Generation. I loved that to death. I can quote that shit. There are some parts of Deep... Uh, I keep saying Deep Space Nine. There are some parts of The Next Generation that, in my opinion, are some of the best stories ever written in the history of humanity some of them and this guy was very heavily influenced by it i'm not sure where oh there was a part in the old one that's what i was saying there's a part in the old series uh the original where kirk says what would god need with a starship when some creature approaches them claiming to be god and i guess this guy just ran with that idea like oh there could be a God out there for all we know. Just crazy, man. So to speak of that level above, we shouldn't be afraid to use the word evolutionary level above. It's not really an evolutionary level above in that creatures here can advance to that kingdom level because they can't. That sounds strange. Yeah, well, it, it sounds like nonsense, honestly, but okay. Well, they can, but they can't on their own. So people can, uh, what, what, I guess, move into the heavenly body or whatever, the evolutionary level above human. They can move into the evolutionary level above human, but they can't do it on their own. They have to use what he calls an original member, which means him. He has to help them ascend into heaven, okay? The same evolutionary level that created the human kingdom has to come into the human kingdom and offer life to them. That's right. He's claiming to be a space alien, and he claims that he's Jesus, too. Jesus was an alien. Really. That's what he believes. Has to offer information to them. Has to offer substance of mind to them. Has to create or if the recipient is thirsty enough for that mind and that recipient then finds that 
they have found a source that is from that level that is in their presence, physically in their presence. Don't forget, it's not a spiritual kingdom. It exists with an identity of mind or spirit, but it wears physical bodies. Do you look at the heavens and night? And why do you see physical bodies in the heavens? If it was a spiritual heaven, you wouldn't see any of those bodies. They would so um, what he's talking about is stars. I guess stars are physical bodies in heaven. Is he saying that stars are like angels and stuff? So nothing can exist outside of Earth, or he's right about everything. Okay. It would all be etheric, but you see those heavenly bodies. You see only a tiny, tiny fraction of those physical bodies in the kingdom of heaven. That doesn't mean that our heavenly father's kingdom or the kingdom of God or the evolutionary level above human is anything less because it has physical characteristics. It has all characteristics. Everything that you can talk about came from them, including evil including the design of everything that can lead you to go astray. So he hates sexuality, hates it. I'm wondering if he believes that sexuality was also created by the, you know, beings in the evolutionary level above human. Is that what he's saying? Yeah, it, I'm confused. Yeah, you're not alone. This is a confusing, nonsensical, bizarre speech that he's giving right now. Nerical, that was in Star Trek V. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't remember which one it was in. Again, I haven't seen the original Star Trek, but I loved um, The Next Generation. Elon, ju Elon just banned the word cis and cisgender, calling it a slur. It ain't a slur. It's used by doctors. Whatever happened to free speech? Absolutism. Oh, he never cared about free speech at any point. Yeah, that didn't surprise me. It is used by doctors. Um, I figured I'd address that real quick. I heard that he did that, that he banned the word cis and cisgender any word can be used as a slur up to and including the word boomer possible to use anything as a slur if it's not being used as a slur then it's not a slur in my opinion i mean with some exceptions of course some words that are synonymous with slur like there is no other use but the n-word with an a is not a slur for example it's just normal you know, that's what people say to each other sometimes. So any word has that exception, I think. It just kind of depends on the uh, context. And ...of everything that can lead you to go astray by, if you listen to the wrong sources, you could say that couldn't possibly be true. There is nothing that is that was not created by the kingdom level above human. So he's saying the space aliens created everything, including evil, including sexuality. All righty. And the reason they created everything that there is, including negative options, is so that you could become exactly what you chose to become when you had the opportunity to become it. Now, the only time we have an opportunity to leave the human kingdom and go to the kingdom level above human is when there is a member from that kingdom level, incarnate in human form. He's talking about himself right now. Um, the only way you can get to heaven, or outer space, I guess, or you, the, the only way your spirit can get to outer space is if, uh, you know, somebody who is basically God incarnate helps you get there. And he is that person, I guess. Taking that body and saying to you, I'll tell you about a kingdom level beyond here and if you want to go there then you have to follow me because i'm the guy who's got the key at the moment whatever representative is sent from that kingdom level and comes into the human kingdom then that's the representative that has that key that key to that kingdom for that period of time and it requires that you if you move into that evolutionary kingdom that you leave behind everything of human ways human behavior human ignorance, human misinformation. Long time ago, long before this civilization began, and I don't know how many subsequent times this occurred, that kingdom level had a representative into 
in a human civilization and members of a classroom that were in the process of overcoming their human characteristics. So right now, if you're not familiar with the lore here, he's talking about I apparently like back in the old days, apparently this whole cycle has happened once before. Apparently he came and you know, talked to people and did classes with them and all that other junk. That's what he's saying right now. Some of those members that began to serve in elementary ways for that kingdom level above human, some of them decided that they didn't want to listen to that representative anymore. That Presumably he's talking about himself being Jesus. Of course, that's what he believes. And it's when he came back as Jesus or... I guess when he first appeared as Jesus and there were some disciples who didn't want to listen to him. Okay. Some of them decided that they didn't want to listen to that representative anymore, that they could do the things they wanted to do. And they weren't sure they wanted to get rid of human ways. And so they began to find fault in the representative that was offering them a way out of the human kingdom. Well, you know, the story from there, fallen angels, Lucifer, Satan, a third of the heavens, following a renegade that decided this world is not for me. I can be my own God. I don't need that kingdom level. I resent that I cannot be my own individual. I can't lead my own flock. Well, that kingdom level above human let that individual and their following lead their flock let them do what they wanted to do and used it for means that could serve a purpose in the design of the next level progression and okay god i feel like he's making absolutely no sense is it just me is, is this complete nonsense right now what he's saying that very evil presence is thick on this planet because it's the end of an age your mom's thick presence is thick on this planet because it's the end of an age it's so thick that it would not have you believe a word I say and have you not accept anything that I tell you so that you will not be a recipient of the kingdom they left they got booted out of and they want no one to go there they don't <clears throat> think that it is the only kingdom level and they are resentful they are in opposition to the real kingdom level above human. Don't forget the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Now, end of age, end of civilization is the worst time for presences of that level. I mean, of those who, of the renegade level, those that were students of that level and went renegade. When you read in historical data that there was also a hell and there is a hell and the hell is where those evil forces are you can imagine that part of that hell is planet earth when those evil individuals are the so he's saying earth is hell okay those who chose to i mean you know this is actually a pretty common belief as far as religious beliefs go that that earth is hell in fact that's actually what the Bible says about it, that Satan is wandering around earth right now. Hell is actually not in the Bible. The way it's described, that's not in the Bible. That was never supposed to be part of doctrine, according to Jesus or anybody else. It's a misunderstanding, misinterpretation. One of the things Jehovah's Witnesses get correct, in it, interestingly enough. But yeah, and they use that as a uh, leverage to boost their own credibility about other things that they are wrong about. So anyway, just kind of interesting. He's talking about hell being on earth. Okay. Earth. When those evil individuals or those who chose to go awry, those followers of Lucifer, of Satan, <clears throat> when they went awry, they were then booted out of the kingdom level above human and confined to not only planet earth but any other planet with this type of gravity and other environments that 
could serve as a natural environment for a human level. Right. I was wondering how he was going to tie this back to space and space aliens and all of that. So I guess what he's saying is that what I guess God, which is also T, his uh, partner, T confined the devil or Lucifer to Earth and not didn't allow Lucifer to roam around in space anymore. All right. They need a human civilization. They use bodies from human civilization. They make hybrid bodies because they have to continue to live. Don't forget, they had learned what spirit was. They had learned to separate their mind, their spirit, from a human body. And their identity was not lost if they lost a body. They learned to move out of that body without losing their consciousness, even take another body that was prepared for them and invade that body and take it over, and they could sustain the life of it. And for the most part, as far as they are concerned, they are taking advantage of the plants, the human plants, the creatures of this civilization, using them for their own means. Well, I mean, that's what you do on Earth, right? You use what's on the planet for your own means. Welcome to capitalism. By the by, um, Bobby Luan, I think, says he was not talking about him as the first incarnation as Jesus. He's talking about the story of Lucifer turning against God. And it was in, pra in, it was in fact previous to humans refusing to comply. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe you're right on that point. Maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Um, yeah, okay, that checks out. While the kingdom level above human is in close because of our presence assisting us and they are in close, those aliens... I call them aliens because one way you could speak of them is space aliens, evil space aliens. They're not really space aliens because they can't go in except a very limited part of space. They're confined to environments where there are hum uh, mammalian, human equivalent, or human uh, civilizations existing. They feed off of them. They need their bodies. So they're not really broad space aliens, but, you know, the common term is space alien. Right, okay, common term is space alien. Got it. God, this dude just rambles, doesn't he? What a confusing thing to say. This guy's got problems, man. And I don't mind calling them space aliens. But because certainly the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the evolutionary level above human, when they're present here, they certainly wouldn't be called aliens because this is their garden. They made it. We are their experiments. We are their creatures. We are their creations. They made us everything that we are. Weird that he said it that way. Creations? I don't understand. Am I missing something here? Now, the I've got to go back to the beginning of this tape because the... I don't want you to listen to my philosophy, my ideology, my the knowledge that I have. I want you to be aware that the focus is on the fact that this is the end of the age. At the end of the age, the planet is wiped clean, refurbished, rejuvenated. The mess that the humans have made of it during the civilization that was on it. The mess they've made is cleaned up, it is healed. It's probably done on fast forward. It probably wouldn't take very long to do it by standards of, of uh, human time. So it would be quick. I guess he's saying that it would be quick and easy to destroy the planet. Is that what he's trying to communicate? I think it is. But even if it took a thousand years to do it, that's a very brief time. We don't know how long it's going to take to do it. We can't estimate that. But then why is he saying it would be very brief in human time? Why is he even bringing this up? He just said that. Because we're talking two different times anyhow. I mean, I'm trying to relate to you in human time, and yet I am more at home in relating to the time of the next level. But if this planet is about to be recycled, spaded under, refurbished, and the only ones that get to leave it are the ones who want to leave. 
the one, only ones who survive the recycling are the ones who want to leave, have found a guide, someone that can give them the information they need to leave or give them the information that will eventually lead them to leaving. Now, what I mean by that is... Dude, this guy gets off on so many tangents, it's ridiculous. More tangents than me. That during the time that we are here, and, you know, here I am, I'm Doe, Doe of T and Doe. No, you are Marshall Applewhite. Of the little religious UFO cult. Okay, now you, yeah, that's pretty accurate, I'll go with that. And yet, that, because that's what the world dubbed us. And yet, T, who is my father, who is my older member, who gave me birth. I think that he's crying right now because T was his partner and she died of cancer way before she was supposed to in the ideology. Really sad. You know, sometimes I tear up when I think about the fact that my grandma is gone. Um, you know, it seems like he really cared about her a great deal. In the kingdom of heaven, long before this civilization, T was here with me on this particular mission. Now, let me describe this mission for a moment. T Please describe the mission. He left in Earth time, 1985, because T had assisted enough that it was time to turn responsibility over to Doe and for me then at that time to begin a more serious communication with my older member and to be dependent upon it and reliant upon it. Now, when T and I were awakening because we entered this environment to any significant degree in the early 70s. We entered in the early 70s. You're looking at the body I'm wearing, you're saying, you're certainly more than 20-something years old. The body I'm wearing is, wow, 65 years old. Yes, the body is that old. I wow, he says. Okay, the body, 65. Is it really how old he was at the time? Interesting. I entered at the same time my older member entered, which was in the early 70s. Well, that doesn't make any sense, whether I'm new age or what. I'm not, not that I'm new age, but whether you're... Whatever your belief is regarding reincarnation, you could think, well, I don't understand. Reincarnation occurs at the beginning of an infant's life. No. I'm sorry? Reincarnation begins at the end of an infant's life? Is that what he said? I am so lost. Oh, I'm sorry to say uh, that's not accurate. Um, uh, a life, a mind begins when that infant is born and that genetic package that's in that infant begins to express itself as that mind develops and it is a mind it is a spirit but then a spirit or a mind that had previously occupied another human plant but has gone into the spirit world so he's been referring to people as plants they were planted here uh that's what he said or that's what he meant when he said human plant just now or is outside of a body because it lost its body from death or whatever, but is in the environment, can move in and take over that vehicle and be stronger than the mind that is the mind of that vehicle. In other words, it can invade that vehicle. When he says vehicle, he's talking about body. Um, he doesn't like the fact that he has a human body. He wants to be... He's having some level of dysphoria. Now, this dysphoria was built on delusion but yeah he believed that he's supposed to be a space alien crazy it can take it over it can uh, pretty much keep the mind of that vehicle quiet and do what it wants to do with that vehicle now the lower forces know this they teach spirits to do this after they leave their bodies they let them know that 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 they're capable of doing that you can say you mean that you and T came into bodies in 72, so you're body snatchers, in a sense. Well, if my father, if the level above human made this garden and its design, made the human plants for their purposes, and my father sent T and my, I guess my grandfather, T's father, sent us into this environment with 
a crew that had work to do, and yet we were, now we did come in and prep the vehicles. We actually took even the, this. He says he prepped the vehicles. What he's saying right now is before he took over this body that he's in right now, he came to Earth and, like, prepared Marshall Applewhite's body. This is crazy. Plant that I'm wearing, this vehicle that I'm wearing, and the plants of the crew, the classroom. The plant, he says, because his body was planted. This, God, dude, this guy needs help. No joke. Needed. Needed. I guess he's beyond help now, sadly. The plant that T chose to wear, those were all set aside in a sense. Uh, a deposit of a little bit of information was put in those plants that set... Okay, so now I believe what he's saying is that when Marshall Applewhite was, like, about to be born, Jesus, who he believes himself to be, Jesus planted information in his mind to be awakened at the right moment in his life. That's what he's saying, I think. Okay? Put them aside for the time that the mind was to significantly come in. And therefore, the... Uh, there's no, the mind that is now in here is almost like, uh, cannot relate to what that plant was prior to the time that it came in significantly. So who the plant was that I'm now wearing prior to the early 70s is just a fuzzy, uh, dismal memory because it's just like taking on a suit of clothes that had a history to it. And if I tried, I could relate, I could, and invade some of that history and you can if you put a suit on you can figure out what the history of that suit was just by wearing it okay dredge it up but it's so unattractive to me and it's such a low vibration to me if i can use that word without sounding new age to some no you sound new age you can't use it without sounding new age but it's, it's repulsive to me because it's certainly very human because this vehicle certainly indulged in human behavior, human addictions, human ways, as every other human does. But when T and Doe were brought into this environment in the early 70s, a spacecraft brought us in. Remember, it's a physical world. I thought he said that, it, like, the original body is what he's referring to, not Doe. He is Doe. And Doe is Jesus. But Marshall Applewhite was just a body that he prepped. Why didn't he say Marshall Applewhite? Why did he say Doe? Because he doesn't want people to know his real name. That's probably why. I'd be willing to bet anything. Spacecraft brought us in, and actually we came in, well, came in first and made deposits, our little information deposits, in our vehicles when they were infants. So... That means we had to come in in the uh, 20s and 30s, and then we had to come in and make deposits in the vehicles of all the classroom that's sitting here in front of me. You know, some... So all of the people in the classroom are special. Uh, you know, 39 people went out with him. Uh, well, 39 people total, including him. There were like hundreds, actually, over the course of years. Hundreds of people passed through their belief system. So what about like all other human beings? Are they just they they don't have that quote unquote plant in them? I guess okay. Oh, several dozen individuals sitting here in front of me. Their vehicles had to have little deposits made in them at the various times that those vehicles were infants. That's weird to me because I is what he's saying that you cannot be a part of his group unless you have this special whatever, this special, like, he planted the belief in your mind. So all, I don't know how many people there were, five billion people on the planet, or six maybe, were incapable of being a part of his religion because he didn't plant the information in their heads before. And um, now it's difficult to accept the information that I'm telling you. 
if you well, that's a little far-fetched knew how to interpret some of the religious documents that have been left for you you would inter interpret them exactly as i am telling you yes he's talking about the bible if you understood what he was saying if he had planted that information in your brain when you were a little baby then you would understand but he didn't do that because you're not worthy i suppose but it's not popular to do that the lower forces would have you interpret those that information those documents entirely differently because the lower forces satan lucifer fallen angels all of those that are against the real kingdom of god they would have you not reach that kingdom they are delighted to serve as your god they will give you the things that will make you happy in this world fantastic great i want to be happy in this world because guess what I'm banking on the fact that you're wrong. I bet my life on it, literally. And now we know he was wrong because he claimed in the year 2000, the, you know, the earth is going to be destroyed. In fact, it was even sooner than that. He said in the millennium it was going to be destroyed. And we we're like decades and decades beyond that now. He was obviously wrong, right? I guess we were right to not trust what he had to say. Of course, I was only like seven at the time, but still. Just crazy, man. So sad. We were banking on the fact that he was wrong, but we only get one go around. We only get one shot at this. Don't waste it. It's so sad to see people completely just light their lives on fire for no reason. Please don't waste it. Don't waste what time you have here. Enjoy it. Don't waste it fretting and thinking about, oh, the possibility maybe I'm gay and what will that mean? Will my parents hate me? Don't. Just live your life. Live your life. Enjoy it. Make you feel good about it. It's even so popular today in religions that God wants you to live a, an abundant life. And so ask him for what your needs are. He doesn't want you to be raggedy and poor. And of course, that's true. He doesn't. But that doesn't justify seeking a kingdom here instead of seeking his kingdom. You don't instead of seeking his kingdom. So he's saying God wants you to live an abundant life. God wants you to have enough to survive and be happy. But it doesn't justify seeking the other kingdom instead of God's kingdom. So it seems like you can seek both, right? Is that what I'm picking up here? That's what I'm picking up. Is that what he's putting down? You can seek both. You can enjoy life and Follow Jesus or whatever, the holy hack. Follow him, really. Sadly for these people, they he didn't allow the people to ever leave the mansion, basically. They had to live there. They had to follow his rules, and they were very, very strict, too. Very. They had to cut their hair the same way. They even neutered the, each other at one point. Seriously. Some of them did, and then they realized how dangerous it was. Just disturbing, dude. Disturbing. Don't seek his kingdom unless you seek to get out of this kingdom. You can't have both. His kingdom is never going to coexist with the human kingdom. Wait, why can't you have both? I don't understand. He just said that God would allow you to live a life where you aren't destitute, right? Why can't you have both? That's impossible. That's like the humans getting down on their all fours and existing with the dog kingdom and and having an exchange there and stay and the humans having an exchange. Does that mean what I think it means? Kingdom and and having an exchange there and stay and the humans staying and restricted to dog houses and restricted to dog food and res restricted to dog behavior. It doesn't make any sense. Why would the kingdom that made the human kingdom find fulfillment in the human kingdom? Okay, so he planted the seed of, I don't know, space aliens in his followers' minds when they were born in the 20s and 30s. Uh, and that made them special. So they don't have to, like, deal with chasing after earthly interests or whatever god i keep thinking about the fact that they neutered themselves and it bothers me so much i can't stand it it's horrific man now the a remarkable thing exists the most remarkable thing that you can possibly imagine 
and that is their design was that they could make these little mental deposits in human plants and we'll call those deposits for sake of understanding we'll call them soul okay so were they souls or not he says they're going to call them souls for the sake of understanding what's he talking about and those little deposits are really just like a little bit of hardware or a little capacity for information it's a storehouse for information and in that little soul, there is a little bit of next level mind. And wherever that next level made those deposits in human plants of souls, there is a little bit of information in those souls, and that little bit of information can permit the person who has that soul to actually recognize the kind of information that I am passing to you now. Okay, uh, so anybody that is like that has that deposit in their mind can recognize what he's saying is true. Interesting. All righty. Now, uh, even as you listen to me, you might recognize it, but the lower forces and your genetic programming, everything says, "Oh, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. That's horrible. That's the Antichrist, or that's that's not God as I know it. That's." something altogether different. I'm afraid that what you have been listening to, I'm not blaming you for listening to it. You hardly stood a chance. The lower forces, these forces have been so strong and have developed so strong that they have just brainwashed and kept totally intoxicated humans at every level around the globe so that they're totally preoccupied with make money, put it in the bank, have more children, have more grandchildren, send them to college, leave all this so that they can have a future and they can have a future and they... What is that? It's living life as a human being. That's what it is. And that's how a lot of people find their joy, by doing everything they can to help the people around them. You know, some people find their joy in life by taking care of themselves. Like... Andrew Tate, for example. Look out for number one. Do anything I can to further my own interests, even at the expense of others. I don't get my joy from that. I get my joy, my interest, from making sure the people around me are okay. That's what brings me joy. This dude doesn't seem to get it. This guy doesn't seem to understand why people enjoy life or what they enjoy about it. Well, again, yeah, it makes sense that he doesn't understand because, you know, he had a problem with sexuality. He could not come to terms with it, couldn't deal with it. It's so sad. That's extend human kingdom, extend human kingdom, extend human kingdom. Oh, yes, we go to church once in a while and we talk about heaven, talk about kingdom of heaven, but we really... It's like most people don't even want to touch it because they don't really know what it is. They just have to have the faith that, oh, well, that's what I go to if I've been good. And I just have to trust that that's what I go to. It doesn't make any sense. Thank you. I totally agree. Absolutely. Well, you can say, why are you telling me it doesn't make any sense? That's where my trust is. That's where my faith is. I know that it is. It's not your fault. I know that's where your trust is. I know that's where your faith is. And I'm desperate to give you help. So this is so sad, dude. He's literally crying. He believes that he is Jesus and he has the answers that you need. And these people be believed him. The people behind the camera filming all this, they, they bought it. So sad, man. So that you can leave this place. Now, three kinds of individuals can have a possible future with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. One kind of individual that can have a future are those who have had deposits of souls and have started, oh, a few minutes ago I started to tell you this remarkable design. Yeah, and he keeps jumping from subject to subject because he his mind is scattershot. He cannot pull it together and stay on one subject. It's crazy. And I've got to go back to it. This remarkable design is how, what a soul can become. 
how a soul can be deposited in a human vehicle. And those deposits are made at a time right prior to a representative of the kingdom level above human coming into the human kingdom, taking a human body, and telling the truth about what the human kingdom really is, what the kingdom level above human really is, and giving that information a chance to build in those souls. Now, if a human plant has a soul, then that human plant has to find someone who is from that kingdom level. And that individual is, going, is here to try to help those get information that can lead them out of the human kingdom. So that individual is going to say, I'm from the kingdom of heaven. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, man. I am not fully understanding what this dude's trying to communicate. Lead them out of the human kingdom. So that individual is going to say, I'm from the kingdom of heaven. Oh my goodness. How blasphemous can someone be? Well, he, he called himself Jesus in the last one, so that's how blasphemous someone can be. Say, I am from the kingdom of heaven. How can they offer anything if they don't identify who they are? They're saying, you want to go to heaven? I'm here. I'm sent here for the express purpose of helping you get to the kingdom of heaven. Now, the remarkable little process that happens if a human plant, if an individual who has that little deposit of soul hears that voice that says, I'm from the kingdom of heaven, I can help you go to the kingdom of heaven, then that individual ex experiences severe pain and begins to break away from... Oh, wow. That was abrupt. Apparently, the filming ended. He couldn't continue for some reason. All right. Dude, what, what happened? Oh, God, I'm so curious. I want to know what happened. Was that the end? Oh, dude, are there commercials? Skin Awareness Month. Call 1-800-733-SKIN for your direct line to healthy-looking skin, complete with Vaseline Intensive Care updates, coupons, and samples. If you're a homeowner looking to consolidate bills, call First Plus. I love it, dude. I love the commercials. Okay, interesting. You're gonna... Meant it was time for them to leave the planet. All 39 victims left identification on their bodies, and now authorities are in the midst of notifying relatives. More from ABC's Lisa Salters. The largest mass suicide in U.S. history was in... Wow. So, interesting. I, apparently, they had an ABC report on it in the middle of this tape, and it looks old, too. This looks like the original report on, like, when this all happened. God, dude, I, I wish these people could have pulled it together for real. They're showing what, you know, the end result. This is what they found when they walked in. Unfortunately, they were all wearing the same clothing. They were wearing the same exact sneakers. They were wearing the same everything. They were Nike something. It was a sneaker that was discontinued after that. And morbidly, that sneaker type is now in high demand on eBay, very expensive. You can buy those sneakers. They all wore the exact same type. Well-planned event. The dead were all found lying on cots and bunk beds. They wore the same clothing, the same brand new tennis shoes, their personal belongings placed carefully by their sides. Investigators say the mass suicide occurred in stages. One group of 15, followed by another, and then a final group of nine, all had instructions on how to follow a deadly recipe. Yeah, I talked about this in another one. I don't know if you saw my other part on this, but if not, um, I feel it's kind of important to explain, you know, it's for educational purposes, um, which should be a justification for monetization, I'm hoping, but I still feel it's necessary either way. They mixed cyanide into applesauce, and they ate it. Uh, this This first group of 15 ate it, and then put bags over their heads and laid down and the second group of 15 came along and ch checked that the bags were secured and then they ate their cyanide at laced applesauce once they finished their applesauce the the th third group came along basically and checked the bags on their heads and that was the end of it my understanding is there's they left one person behind at the end to manage their intellectual properties and their everything else. I don't know for sure, but I'm 
guessing that that person was probably the the last one to check the final bag, you know? God, it's so sad, dude. So sad. I just wish these people could have pulled it together, honestly. Put the medicine in and stir it. And then eat it quickly. Drink this vodka mixture, which they apparently had mixed up and then lay back and, and rest quietly. Authorities say identifying the body. So this is older, very old. This is from the very beginning, like when they first discovered it. So some of the facts may not be completely solid, but we have information now. We know exactly what happened and how it all played out. Bodies was easy once they were removed from the home. The victims all left ID. The group also left behind a videotape, an attempt to explain the question they knew the world would ask. Why? I'm really happy that I made this choice. Yeah, they left a, uh, it's called an exit tape. And uh, we'll probably end up watching that um, at some point. The exit tapes are really interesting too. Sad and interesting. And it serves as a lesson for how we can avoid this type of thing in the future. What led to this type of event happening, you know? This is pr from the exit tape right here. Two believers. We're looking forward to this. We're happy and excited. The victims were all members of a religious cult called Heaven's Gate. They believed their deaths would transport their spirits to a spaceship trailing behind the hale bob comet. Well, we're still here. <laughs> and not for long. Along with the tape, the group also left a letter to the news media saying, quote, by the time you receive this, we'll be gone. Several dozen of us. We came from the level above human in distant space, and we have now exited the bodies that we were wearing for our earthly task. To return to the world from whence we came, task completed. In addition to its own website, the group constructed web pages for businesses. Yeah, that, uh, that website is still up. I... We looked through it uh, in another part, maybe even this earlier on, but yeah. Website's still up after all of these years. 96 or 97's when they checked out. So what, three decades nearly? Crazy. But few of those clients knew about the bizarre motivation behind Heaven's Gate. These recruiting tapes were made by the group's leader, Marshall Applewhite, known to his followers yeah, as Doe. So we have no hesitation. Yeah, we do, we've watched this exact tape not long ago, just like in the previous parts. If you want to see it, uh, just check it out. To leave this place, to leave the body that we have. Back in 1975, Applewhite and a nurse he met in a psychiatric hospital co-founded a religious sect called The Two. The Bonnie Nettles, and he was Marshall Applewhite. They went by T and Doe. The woman died in 1985. It is believed Applewhite was one of the dead in Rancho Santa Fe. That's correct. He was. And authorities have now confirmed that one of the 39 victims was indeed Marshall Applewhite, but no other identifications are being released at this time. Sheil? Lisa, what do people in the community know or suspect about Applewhite and the group? Well, remember, Heaven's Gate uh, ran this business of constructing web pages for, uh, for organizations. Of the clients that we have spoken to, they all say that Marshall Applewhite, uh, though he was in some sense strange, he was very good at what he did. He was very good at constructing these web pages, and they were very pleased with the job that he did. A very different picture of the man that we see on these videotapes who is talking about ascending to heaven in a UFO. Lisa, thank you. ABC's Lisa Salters in Rancho. Yeah, they were very skilled, from my understanding, at what they did. And it, it's just so devastating that they, they couldn't pull it together. You know, they were functioning members of society, all of them. Like I said earlier, like the news report said earlier, they were some of them were like valedictorian. You know, they were really influential. They were very intelligent. They were high up and well-known and respected in their communities, knew what they were doing. It's just like, how could this have happened? It's so heartbreaking for these people, you know? Well, anyway, yeah, so apparently there's a news report. Is the rest news reports? I think it is. Yeah, the rest of the tape's just news reports. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments. It's fascinating, but also valuable to understand how they got here, to understand where he was in his head and what he believed and all that stuff. Yeah, let me know what you think.